Welcome to the Smart Connector podcast. My name's Jane Baylor, and I have such a wonderful guest for you today. It's Sherry Shannon Vanstone. Welcome, Sherry. Well, thank you. It's great to be here, Jane. Great to have you here. So Sherry is a serial tech entrepreneur with several exits under her belt in both the US and Canada. And she's also an advocate for female entrepreneurship and women in tech. So she's based west of Toronto, that's in Canada, as I'm sure most of you will know, and she's got a platform that matches industry partners with funders. So we're going to be talking about that as well later. And one of the things that we're really going to focus on and and dive deep in in this podcast is how companies can start exploring the field of AI and how businesses can use AI to build their success. So I can't wait to get into this because AI is such an important and big topic. So it is really fantastic that I have the opportunity to share your wisdom and expertise with my audience, Sherry. So we'll get straight into it, shall we? Yes. Okay. But before we do, just like to learn a little bit about you. So tell us, how you came to be an expert in this amazing uh, area. I have been in uh, in technology. I was a mathematician with the U.S. government and uh, went in and then became an entrepreneur. And so uh, I had an opportunity to work with a startup in Silicon Valley uh, many years ago now and uh, had a uh, successful uh, launch with them in my entrepreneur journey. And uh, being a mathematician, I was an, became an expert in cryptography, which is the encryption and decryption and making codes and breaking codes. And so when I left the government to go to the Silicon Valley company, it was in information security. So we were doing information security for some of the largest multinational companies in the world. And that led me to... Uh, Canada, and uh, we did all the security for the BlackBerry, and then we did the security for driverless cars and connected vehicles. And then my last company I sold in 2017 to Robert Bosch, a private German company, and I had a five-year non-compete. So I'm thinking, what am I going to do now? (laughs) (laughs) So I started exploring data analytics and AI. And that was in 2018. So, so yes. Yeah. So 2018, that's uh, that's really before a lot of people were talking about AI all the time as they are now, right? So you, you got a head start, didn't you, Sherry? Yes. Yes, I did. And it was quite interesting because so much has happened in, in the last 16 months, as we know, in AI that uh, it, it is interesting to see this perspective that I, I've seen, and in, in not just in the since 2018, I was also with MasterCard International, where we use neural networks and many, many years ago, and still do. Uh, so AI is not new, and machine learning is not new. It's just that's what's happened in the last 16 months, but even in the last 10 to 20 years or so is the compute power and the algorithms have gotten so much better, have improved so much in efficiencies. So, uh, but yes, the last 16 months have just uh, been quite exciting, not only for the world, but for my company in particular and what we do. Yes. Well, let's let's talk about that, Sherry. So what it, what actually is it that you are doing from day to day then in your business right now? Yeah, so the company is, is, is named Profound Impact, and we have a product called Research Impact, and we, we use machine learning and AI to try to find the perfect match between research funding opportunities, which is over $300 billion worth annually every year, with the hundreds of thousands of corporate uh, partners or corporate uh, entities that want to do research, And then the academic researchers, which is about 25 million. Mm. So taking this and trying to get the best match, especially at the tri match, meaning matching funding with an industry partner, then with the academic research is uh, an interesting and exciting challenge. 
And it's, it's humans don't do it as well as in the algorithms and AI and machine learning do. Yeah, so that's obviously something that we're going to talk about. So really, where is the value and how can businesses tap into the power of AI to make themselves more successful, to run better businesses, really? And uh, how can they? How can how can AI help their people and their processes and their customers and all of these things? Uh, so it, it's obviously a big area. But pick out out of those, Sherry. What what topic would you pick um, in terms of the biggest impact? that AI is currently able to make for businesses right now? I think there's a many efficiencies. Looking mm -hmm. at your internal work processes mm -hmm. and say, what, what, what is taking up unnecessary amount of time and is, is, is quite time consuming and doesn't need that human um, intervention or human uh, involvement on a yeah. minute by minute and seconds by second. And, and many people will be surprised, especially if you're using third party software or third party vendors that AI is already being, you're already using AI and you don't even know it. And so that's why I think it's best for companies to understand that. Talk to your vendors, talk to your third party suppliers and say to them, how are you using AI? So you will know yourself how it's being used and how you might be able to use it more to be more efficient. For example, in what we do, we digest and ingest 150 page funding uh, applications or nom you know, uh, nominations. Or, uh, and, and so that's easier for a machine to do and an algorithm to do than it is for a human being. Mm -hmm. It's very time consuming for a human being. And, and at the end of it, you may say, oh, I'm not even eligible for this. So this, this funding opportunity. So what we do is do something that it takes human beings a long time to do and human beings are not as efficient and accurate as machines are. So in everyone's process out there, you're, you're the, your listeners and the companies they represent, they should look at their work process and their workflow. And mm -hmm. in every area from sales to marketing to manufacturing, how could they utilize AI? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. A lot of sense. And what about uh, its impact in terms of marketing and uh, customer engagement and brand and all of that kind of thing? What 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 do you think is the contribution and the impact of AI in those areas right now, Sherry? Because it's a big it's a big topic as that's well. A big, that's a big topic, and there's uh, there are companies, as I said, if you're using social media, they're already using AI. And if you're connected to LinkedIn in any way, you're probably are, uh, most listeners are, and they would be, be using some type of AI to match you with people that you might want to get to know or might want to connect. And um, I, I, that's the only social media that I personally use. My company uses all, the, all of them. But I, I find myself, it's interesting when you, they suggest something for you or your Spotify or your, your iTunes, uh, what, what you're listening to, uh, Netflix, what you're watching, what they think you might want to watch because of what you've been watching. A lot of that is, is based on AI. And so it's going to get more targeted as, as uh, we advance even further. So your personal needs and likes are going to be very, the, 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 the marketing to you personally is going to be very targeted. And uh, you're going to even have to be, if you really want to fool the algorithms, go and do something crazy and watch something that you never want to see again or whatever, <laughs> because it's going to go, oh, and of course, because they're looking for patterns and it's looking for um, these things. But as, as I said, it's, a, it's going to get more targeted for you. Now, if, if in your company, like my company, we want to target specific individuals at, Ac you know, academic researchers and also industry partners who want to find non-dilutive funding um, mm -hmm. for their research activities. So that helps us that we can say we want to be very specific and very targeted. So AI helps us to figure out what are the best um, uh, avenues 
what are the best vehicles to utilize? How are we going to reach these people in the in the most efficient and cost effective way? Yeah, it's such an interesting topic. And as you were talking, I was thinking I'm getting all these invitations at the moment to contribute to the AI generated articles on LinkedIn in partnerships. And I didn't necessarily I didn't actually sign up for that uh, particular um, area of specialty. But the articles that they're sending me, I'm thinking, you know, I really love this topic. And this is very, very me. And sometimes you think, you know, they've almost seen something. This AI has almost seen something in me that I would not necessarily even have spotted myself. And that really is the power of it, isn't it? Because as you said, it's totally driven by logic and patterns. And sometimes we humans are well, I, I suppose there's human error, isn't there? And there's confirmation bias and there's all of these um, limitations that we have that computers don't have, really. Isn't that right? Yes. And if you look at it that way, it's a very positive way to look at it, mm. is that um, it the, the, the machine is almost kind of, well, the, the, the algorithms, I wouldn't call them machine, the algorithms themselves, uh, or as I said, learning a lot about you, maybe even the potential that you have. I have to tell you this, I have to, because it's 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 really funny in a way. Um, yeah. a, a year and a half ago, when I first was introduced to Chat GPT, yeah. I had I I inquired, I said, write two paragraphs on Dr. Scott Vanstone, who was my he is my late husband, and he had 450 patents. He was professor for 35 years. He started companies. He well published and well documented his career. So it wrote a pretty accurate um, description for him. So I said, write two paragraphs on me, Sherry Shannon Vanstone. And it came up and it hallucinated. But what it did was it based on, on my experience, it, it might have even, I mean, I'm thinking back, I go, well, maybe I could have done that, but I didn't do it. So it, it was, uh, it was like, wow. Anyway, it was pretty impressive, but I didn't do half of the things it said I did. But maybe it realized my potential that I should have been able to do that. Anyway, that's kind of, that's leading on your comment. So. That, 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 that is so funny that that it, it's kind of taking the job on of amplifying us to uh, to a whole new level, maybe. <laughs> yes. Right. yes. Yeah. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah. Because, of course, a lot of people get nervous about the power of AI. And of course, um, Elon Musk famously issued a warning that it, it actually has some sinister potential if it is not controlled as well. So uh, what do you think about that, Sherry? I think it's accurate because many of the large language models are fed by the internet. Everything that's out there and they're sinister and evil people and they're people who want that hate and have biases and they want to pro project those onto others so yeah. when when you're looking at the training data or the data sets are called that these mm -hmm. these large language models have been trained on yes so you have to have human intervention in these and they call it fine tuning so a large language model is is developed and then there's human beings in the mm. process to say, is this a proper answer or an answer that ethically uh, or or should be out there? Uh, and so they 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 so some large language they won't answer every question. Chat GPT won't answer every question that you put to it, and because there have been this intervention of human beings, and mm. but but there are large language models being developed every day and the data sets they're built on, we don't know what they are. So that's the thing, first of all, when you, if you are going to use AI in your business um, and it's not a, well, whoever's offering it, ask about the, the, the data set, ask how, how it was trained. And if they say it was trained on everything on the internet and you go, okay, then it, there, if there's been some human beings in the process that try and they, it's continuous, this is not just one mm -hmm. done. Uh, so it's like saying, okay, there is what's, what, what we deem as socially acceptable uh, answers and um, or even questions and some uh, 
uh, large language models, as I said, may be trained on uh, different data and not have that as much human intervention. Now, people, some people will call that censoring because it is a process of saying we won't allow any of this type of behavior. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, but then again, obviously, free speech is a is a is a good uh, is a good thing, but we also do have to recognize the power of the internet to spread whatever you know, false information, hate, or all of those bad things uh, that are antisocial, and nobody really wants that, do except for a minority of people who who are not the kind of people that most most of us would want to associate with. So I understand, I understand why it's important to set some human parameters there because yeah. a machine is is not going to have that, not going to have a conscience. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's trying to build in those guardrails. I, I've heard that term recently used. Guardrails. With AI. Yeah, the guardrails of and and that's that's really guardrails. And you know, if you're conservative or you're liberal, your guardrails may be different, but we're trying to well, the industry, not me personally, but the industry is trying to figure out what it, they, they even have a new term for it. It's called AI safety. Oh. And uh, there's institutes in the UK. There's one being set up in Canada, in the US to for national guardrails to be established, but also the international collaboration uh, for the guardrails. This will continue. And this is not new. We did it with the Internet. Uh, this has been around. The thing, though, is that this is very powerful technology mm. and there's open source AI. People can change the algorithms because they're open source and uh, the data sets can be changed. So it's, it's really trying to not necessarily become an expert. It just just understand what questions you ask. And people ask me, who should we go to for this? And there are consulting firms that are specializing in this today. And I'm sure there's even smaller firms that I'm not aware of that will help companies come up with a list of questions for, for your uh, industry. You may want to be, it may be something your board uh, instigates or initiates that says, these are the questions we would like to see if you have a, a board uh, with the governance. So it is powerful. There are uh we should be cautious about it. Uh, we should try to learn as much as we can. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm very optimistic that we as a society can come up with some good guardrails, but they will continuously change. Just like, yeah, you know, we have seat belts and things that are mandatory today. I have friends that hate those and they still try to avoid utilizing those. But these are man these are mandatory because of what it's doing for society as a whole. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And as you were speaking, I was also thinking about those early days of, of social media and how unprotected a lot of children were and how much better it is really these days and how much it's not just to do with awareness but it's actually the the social media platforms have become much more sophisticated in terms of of protecting people really particularly vulnerable people like like our children and i'm sure that um it was the same thing is going to happen with with ai it's a, it's a continual evolution really isn't it yes and i think that each of us have a part to play in that and mm -hmm. we have a voice uh, AI needs us. And I just was, uh, it was a British lady just published a, a book called AI Needs You. I went to her talk last night in Toronto. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is quite interesting because it's just, a, uh, she she looked back to a, a three um, 20th century uh, innovations. And one was, uh, okay, the one was, uh, I'm now forgetting, but one was the internet and one was uh, in vitro. And I forget the other one now, but it would have come to me. But it was how that when they were introduced, there's everyone, some people were afraid and scared of them and said, wait a minute. And then society itself, us, I'm talking collectively, we, we, we helped put some guardrails on these things. And now look at what Evito has done and you know, the wonderful mm. opportunities and, and uh, that it provides to, to couples. And so those things are very important for us as individuals 
to have a voice in. And, and I applaud uh, the people who push back on the social media platforms to say this is not acceptable behavior and mm -hmm. and we need to, to do something about it. We will need to do the same thing with AI and the companies that we will we deal with. Remember, AI is not being, uh, it's being <laughs> promoted and developed by corporations, small and large. And what, what's the motivation of those corporations? And so we, we should always be asking ourselves, what is my part in this? I need mm. to have a voice and a say. Yeah, I, I love that. And I think that is a very socially inclusive message because I think a lot of people get rather scared and intimidated by the thought of AI and maybe if they feel on the back foot and they don't really understand it, they just think, well, there's this big brotherish thing that's happening out there and and it's nothing to do with me. And I think the message that you are sending here is that it is to do with you. There's nothing to be scared of, really we all have an opportunity to play a part in this continual evolution, really. Yes. I, I, I love that because I think it's, it's sometimes easier to be scared. Mm. We want to be scared of things. I, I, I don't know. Something in human beings. We, we love scary movies. We love scary topics. We, we like the panic. The, like, oh, my God, the world's ending. The sky's falling. Uh, <laughs> and then we find out that... Um, uh, yeah, this, that we should take it seriously, but there is a part that we can play in all of this. We can be the doomsayers or we can try to be the optimists and say, what, what is going, what's, how can we use this for good? AI for good. And there's many opportunities. We're seeing it in, in pharmaceuticals and developing um, specific drugs and also finding cures for specific diseases to hopefully helping us with climate change and how how do we combat it and food you know, insecurities. So that, there's a lot out there and I just was at a uh, top 25 women of influence across Canada uh, at, yeah, in the last few days at uh, celebration. And it, it was interesting to see these women that were being honored and what they were doing. A lot of them were in the social impact area. Mm. And it was, you know, trying to help address. And many of them are already using AI. So I think it's left up to us individually how we want to do it. Do we want to be the complainer, the naysayer, or do we want to be an activist and an advocate? Yeah, I love that. An activist and an advocate. Fantastic. Now, one of the things that we were talking about just before we went live, uh, Sherry, is the role of uh, women in terms of the uh, field of tech as a whole, but particularly in terms of the adoption of AI, because you've got some quite interesting statistics there, haven't you, that you wanted to share with our audience? Yes, and I just heard these yesterday, and I haven't seen them in writing, but it was in a conversation and this uh, professor at the University of Toronto had been a, a, approached by a group asking about AI and women and how we can get more women-led ventures to adopt AI. And mm -hmm. it was said that there were only 16% of all, 15%, uh, of, of, of 16% of women-led ventures were using AI. And that means that, you know, that's like, oh, my gosh. Uh, and the men is much higher, like 50 percent. So we have we have a long ways to go here uh, in this. But I I think these these podcasts such and, and this conversation such as we're having uh, hopefully will be a catalyst for individuals to start doing a little more research on their own or taking a course, an online course or mm -hmm. at their local college or university to try to learn a little bit more. But I think just taking stock of what you do, if you do, as I mentioned earlier, your workflow and your company, what efficiencies could you possibly address using some type of AI? Mm, yeah. And, and as you said, it's, uh, it's, it's just what, what can you do? It could just be something quite small to begin with. I think that's the thing, isn't it? That uh, I certainly feel that over the course of this conversation, that the whole topic of AI has 
become demystified for me in a way. Um, and it's just, yeah, baby steps are also steps, aren't they? Yes. Yes. And I think we all, we, we, we also don't, some of us don't remember the steps we took when in, the internet was first introduced to us. Mm-hmm. I was around the academic world, so I knew you know, the, the, the academic world had, had it first. And I remember the first time at an academic conference, and I'm hearing them spell out the World Wide Web, www. So we had to take backslash, backslash, HTTP. <laughs> and we had to write it down because we didn't know what it was, right? And so we think about this is that we had to say, I'm, am I ever going to use that? I don't know. You know. So now look at us and we're using it. And it's we have realized that uh, you know, it's a great tool. We've also had, understand that, as I said, the guardrails that have had to be developed around yeah. the technology. So uh, AI has come upon us quickly, but as I said, it's been around for years and it's been being utilized by corporations, social media for years and other corporations for years. And as we use Google search today, there'll be more fine tuning on that. So they'll be using more AI. You remember when you do a Google, now you do a Google search and stuff comes out that you don't really care about. It's going to get better and better and better with these search engines with utilizing AI. So uh, yeah, I, I think it's uh, it's just like all innovation, just, but it is happening a little bit quicker than maybe the internet did in our lifetime. But uh, it's an exciting uh, opportunity for us to, uh, to 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 utilize it and. Fit, see how it can benefit us and what we need to be aware of. And I want to bring this up because I think it's important as a, as uh, all corporations is to understand how your employees are uh, reacting to, to your use of AI and your future use, possible oh. use of AI. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's part of being, uh, encouraging them to be a continuous lifelong learner and uh, giving them opportunities to learn. Mm -hmm. We present at our all hands in person meeting how we use AI once a year, twice a year. So we want everyone on our team to understand how we're utilizing AI and what it means to them. Mm. Yeah, I love that. And as you said, we if we have this this knowledge or if we have ways in which we can improve our businesses, we also have to improve our people at the same time, don't we? Yes. Otherwise, people will get, become a, a, afraid of it and say, mm. is it going to take my job? The question yeah. you can ask, turn it around and say, how can we use AI to make me more efficient and effective and and contribute to the bottom line of the corporation. But that comes from the top and from and 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 being open and inclusive. But to me that's one of the reasons I, I moved from California to Canada was the opportunities that I had to develop companies that were built on a culture of inclusion, diversity and mm. uh, and respect for the, all individuals. It was quite toxic in Silicon Valley. And still is, hasn't changed much. Mm. Um, and so I think that whatever you do with your companies, you should try to think, how is this going to affect my team members? Mm. And is this being inclusive or is it being exclusive? And is this diversity, uh, respecting diversity or not? So I, I, and, and I think just sitting down with your team Mm-hmm. And having a discussion with them, what do they know about AI? What? How, but again, starting with how you use it is a good is a good start within a corporation because that's immediate people think, I'm, "Am I going to lose my job?" Yeah. Oh, definitely. And of course, uh, that is that is a fear of anybody that is employed because they're giving their life really to a corporation. And um, it's as as entrepreneurs, obviously, we are always aware that we have those vulnerabilities. So we build things into our businesses to try and address that. But really, um, it's a horrible thing. It's a horrible thought, isn't it? If you think AI is going to take my job, you don't want anybody thinking that really, do you? And I, I think that's, I think it's a valid question though from, from them. And mm-hmm. I, so I think as a, as a leader, 
um, we should be able to answer that question mm. for them. And and it's again not one answer and done. It's it's because it's evolving. This year, this is how we're utilizing AI. This is what we're thinking about how we're going to utilize it longer term. And then how does that affect us? Does it make us more, well, hopefully it makes it more effective, but, but what does it mean? And mm. you may, and also you might need to offer some upskilling and yeah. uh, opportunities for your team to learn more about AI. Mm. Yeah, indeed. So I just want to go back to what you were saying about Silicon Valley, because actually my sister lived in Palo Alto for a long time. She was married to a, a, a tech a, a tech guy. Uh, so I spent quite a lot of time in Palo Alto myself. Now, obviously, uh, Palo Alto is it's the home of tech, really, isn't it? Worldwide. Yes, yes. Uh, so everybody knows that. So if you don't know where Silicon Valley is, it's Palo Alto is the he where the headquarters of all the big tech companies like Google and Facebook all are. They're all in this little place called Palo Alto, which is said it's where my sister used to live. And it's just south of San Francisco. So what is it about that Silicon Valley culture, given that it's a culture that's dedicated to innovation and uh, tech excellence, let's say, that is that is a, a culture that you fled from? Uh, okay. I, I, I want to say that I left. I was fine myself because I'm strong enough, uh, female, to stand up and um, be an influence, hopefully positively, mm -hmm. with the leadership. Um, but I could not get the, the CEO uh, um, he was an older gentleman. Anyway, I, I couldn't change him. And that's what I, and so I, I, when I said I left because of it, I tried to make, to make changes, but I, mm. it, it wasn't working. So what I think we need to do is get more women in town. Yeah. And with that, we'll, we'll come all the good qualities of women uh, yeah. leaders into the workplace and one's being more empathetic and one's being inclusive and respectful. And I think, but so that's, that's, that's one of the big issues. We yeah. just need more women in tech willing to stand up and fight. And like I said, I'm going to start my own tech companies and build a culture, this culture that I believe is essential for, uh, for uh, a, non-toxic in a work environment and yeah. i want it to be more than non-toxic i want it to be a very productive uh, uh, environment and uh and i think um uh, uh, so it's a great place to be uh and you work really hard there i think i with entrepreneurs you always work you know seven days a week and and uh <laughs> eight you know 12 to whatever hours plus uh a day uh, I, I found that too. I was uh, I was head of Asia Pacific for this company, so I spent a lot of time in and out of uh, of Silicon Valley. But but I, of course, I had to deal with the culture because that the headquarters was there. Uh, so I think just getting more women. Let's let's get more. And I also say more diversity in, in, in overall, just not women. The the diversity of perspective and of thought will. Uh, help other the individuals to understand maybe they have some unconscious bias mm. uh, and uh and also there's just except there's acceptable behavior and there's not acceptable behavior mm. and um, i saw the bad and i saw some good there mm. otherwise i wouldn't have stayed with the company as long as i did but when i left i left i'm going to make a try to make a bigger change than i could in just this one organization so more yeah. women more diversity i think we will then uh, and I don't know how long it'll take, but let's just keep trying. Well, that's it, really. And I, and I think for somebody like you who's out there actually championing a diverse and inclusive environment in tech, it's so important that women will be listening to your voice and well, people of color and I mean, anybody who is underrepresented really in that field, um, they need to hear it from people like you that, yes, you do have a place in this world. 
And it is it is not just a, a man's world. It's a world for everybody. And you just have to stand up and say, I want it. Yes. yes. Amazing. Well, it's been such a pleasure to talk to you, Sherry. I really have enjoyed our conversation. And we just talked a little bit at the beginning about your platform that matches industry partners with funders. So uh, could you just um, elaborate on that and you can tell people where to go if that's something that they're interested in as well? So I had mentioned that there's $300 billion of uh, research funding. Uh, worldwide available every year. So we, what our platform does is try to, if you're an industry partner, you're looking for uh, some non-dilutive money funding to do some of your research uh, internally, and then we may need to be partnered with an academic research. We can do that. So you, you give us your project, you can upload it in an intake form on our website, and then we go start looking for for funding for you and you sit back and wait for an email from us. wow yes. that is just amazing <laughs> okay so so what a wonderful opportunity okay well well sherry thank you again it has been a pleasure and um and really looking forward to um hearing more about your progress going forward well thank you and i look forward to hearing more about your work because it's quite impactful thank you so much bye for now bye